so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumunaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam, every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. Lead suspect in Nandi robbery arrested in Suva. A lot more work needed for development of media industry. And a Korotari residents express desire for electricity supply in their community. Good evening, I'm Akusi Tatale and this is FBC News. Police have arrested a lead suspect in an alleged robbery at a service station in Nandi. Tupo Vuetaki was apprehended in Turek Suva this morning almost a week after the alleged robbery at Aerotown Mobile Service Station. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro says three other suspects remain at large. Naisoro commended the public for assisting the police with information for the arrest. Five men masked with crowbars attempted to rob the service station in the early hours of Monday last week. A police officer was also injured in an encounter with the robbers. Fiji's long-term sovereign credit rating has been raised from B to B plus by international ratings agency standards and poors. The agency says Fiji's 2013 to 2015 average real GDP growth to 3.6% from 2.6% and its smooth transition to an elected government helped lift its credit rating. Other positive factors included a more conducive economic environment and donor and multilateral lender re-engagement following re-elections last year. Radio New Zealand International reports at the same time Standards & Poor's has affirmed Fiji's short-term rating at B. The credit rating agency says it expects stronger revenue growth in Fiji to keep fiscal deficits low at close to 2% of GDP in 2015 to 2017. Media, in the media Industry Development Authority Chairperson Ashwin Raj says the media industry has a long way to go. Raj says there is no denying the industry is operating within the complexity of constraints. Ritika Pratap reports. Maida Chairman Ashwin Raj says the media industry has come through an extremely difficult phase, both in terms of the political landscape and the radical transformations that are taking place. He says journalists are now not only dealing with mainstream media, but social media as well. This country needs to have a, a discussion about how the media can be an instrument of social cohesion. How can the media be a voice of reason? How does the media ensure that you know, one does not incriminate? Social media has a bigger impact than many of us think, and so uh, we're still figuring out how, you know, how we can uh, control social media without censoring things. As the community commemorates World Press Freedom Day today, Raj says there is a need for discussions about how the media exercises responsibility in terms of making fact-based intervention and delineates from opinions. Meanwhile, Pacific Islands News Association President Moses Stevens says Fiji has progressed by establishing the Fijian Media Association ahead of other Pacific Island countries. We understand what has been established, like the media decree and all that, and we have the MIDA in, in place. Um, I said on my interview that uh, it's healthy here in Fiji. Uh, uh, at least there's a beginning, you know, the, we are assuming to rebuild the nation again, and the media industry is also being rebuilt. I'm happy with the unity that uh, creating the association has brought uh, amongst journalists and media workers from all organizations. Uh, uh, members join as individuals, so you know you're not uh, 
you're not discriminated against because of who you work for, where you work. So I think it's build, it's finally building solidarity amongst us as media workers. The Secretary for Communication and Overseas Missions in the Methodist Church, Reverend James Bhagwan, urged journalists to recommit themselves to journalism as a vocation rather than just a profession. This year we would just like to encourage uh, our journalists, uh, media workers, uh, communicators to uh, embrace their role, to recommit to that, not to be afraid to uh, scratch below the surface in their stories and to ensure at all times that uh, the voices of the wider community, the marginalized, uh, the less fortunate are always heard. The theme for this year's World Press Freedom Day is let journalism thrive towards better reporting, gender equality and safety in the digital age. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. You can join Edwin Nan for a lively discussion on World Press Freedom Day on For the Record right after the news. Residents of Nakorotar in Lambasa have called for more development in their community. The residents in particular have urged the Minister for Women, Rosie Akbar, to look into making electricity supply easily accessible to the farming community. Alan Stoltz has more. Residents got a first-hand opportunity to meet the minister and express their concerns with her. Shabada Nan says their village has been struggling to get electricity. This area was electricity. And from then we are applying for electricity. Until now, there is no electricity and only four posts are from there to here. The poor state of roads in the area was another grievance raised with the minister. Our students from Koromakawa, mm -hmm. they're traveling through the road. RSL to school and we're taking the risk of that because some of the bridges up there I mean the culverts they are half broken you know? and that's really we're taking the risk of that to getting them through and also the complaint from the driver the driver already complained if this uh, the road remains in this condition I'll just cut it off I won't take your children otherwise I'll be the one be blaming police Minister Rosie Akbar assured the residents that she would raise their concerns with the relevant ministries. I'm sure you don't have to wait for the next 20 years for yeah. something to happen. Mm. But you'd agree with me, like you said, there are priority areas. Mm. And if you have not been put in this year's work, mm. we'll definitely will push for work to be uh, prioritized for next year yes. for your community. Yes. Okay. The communities, which are both located in Korotari, outside Lambasa, thrive on sugarcane and vegetable farming. During this visit, the communities express their gratitude to the government for initiating programs like the social pension scheme, bus fare concession, free education, and the free milk initiative. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Still to come, over 100 government vehicle drivers booked for traffic infringements. Welcome back, this is FBC News. More than 100 traffic infringements have been recorded by drivers of government vehicles in the first quarter of the year, and the Land Transport Authority says this is a worrying trend. Alikimbia has more. Government vehicles are used on a daily basis, and it's the traffic rule violations that have authorities concerned. Land Transport Authority spokesperson Elias Sokia says no one will be spared. Whether we are private or government vehicle or PSV vehicle, light commercial, heavy commercial, any vehicle, um, you know, we all are governed by one regulation. Um, and yes, uh, people have been taken to task uh, in regards to that. Um, our our speed um, our camera violation, uh, we have captured extensively a number of uh, bookings in regards to um, uh, government vehicles, um, you know, 
actually uh, driving uh, recklessly. Public Service Permanent Secretary Pramesh Chand says there are systems in place to deal with these types of abuse. PSC will follow up with these cases if it receives the report of the latest infringements from LTA. Essentially there is a, a vehicle control unit uh, within the Ministry of Finance. Uh, they are the ones who would determine which vehicles were uh, in, in which ministry or department uh, uses those vehicles and, and then they refer the matter to the relevant permanent secretary because the permanent secretary uh, and the department head uh, is empowered to deal with those kind of abuse. Uh, and obviously uh, we would like to monitor that uh, and we do monitor it because if there is no action taken that reflects poorly on that uh, permanent secretary or that departmental head. With over 14,000 bookings and 23 road fatalities recorded in the first quarter of the year, the Land Transport Authority has its work cut out for the rest of the year. It does, however, need the support of everyone from both the public and private sectors to make our road safe to use. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Wesley Mission Church under the Methodist Church in Fiji has taken on board a vision to work and support persons living with disabilities in Asinu. The plan, which will be implemented in other churches in the future, was launched in Suba today. Savera Tamboa has more. Members of the Wesley Mission Church and invited guests gathered at the FMF Gymnasium for the launch of the Disability Inclusive Ministry. Pacific Disability Forum CEO Satareki Madanawai commended the church for its forward thinking. It makes us feel very important. It makes us feel part of the community. It makes us feel included. So we really thank uh, the, the Wesley Division of the Methodist Church, and particularly the Nassim Wesley, for um, uh, taking up this initiative. Reverend James Bagwan says the program will focus on persons with disabilities and follow the three direct pillars of the Methodist Church that touch on this particular mission. Our faith is not about personal piety only. It's about living our faith in society. And so uh, this is an opportunity for us to, to do so uh, and inspire the rest of the Methodist Church to follow up as well. Part of the plan, the Nasinu Church will the first to remodel its building with the construction of ramps of accessibility to persons in wheelchairs. The program will be introduced in other Methodist churches in the future. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. The decision to recognize same-sex marriage within the Anglican Church remains in the discussion stages. The head of the Diocese of Polynesia, Archbishop Winston Halapua, made the comment as heads of the church met for the General Synod service in Suva today. Ali Kimbia has more. Over a thousand members of the Anglican Church in Fiji and the Pacific gathered at the St. John's Church in Wailoku for their Synod service today. The service launched the General Synod meeting, which gets underway tomorrow. Over the past two years, major discussions have taken place within the church regarding the motion of accepting same-sex marriage. I think it's the, what is happening we need to know. We are talking about the powerless people. Poverty, gay rights, environment, um, and other people they are excluded so what we are talking about is inclusivity name it in whatever way you name it but what we know in God's presence inclusivity is not in the language of God so our interpretation is an ongoing talanoa and there is no fixed answer last year Archbishop Halapua explained that recommendations on a separate structure and process to bless same-sex unions would be presented to the Church General Synod in 2016. The motion of same-sex marriage will again be discussed in their General Synod meeting this week. However, the way forward for the Church will be determined after recommendations from various congregations are heard in the Synod meeting next year. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. In this week's successful Fijian segment, we meet communication specialist and writer Mary Rokonandravu, who this week etched her name on the list of prestigious short story writers. Rokonandravu was named the winner of the Pacific Regional Prize in the 2015 Commonwealth Short Story Competition. Shireen Lata reports.
Keep writing, he says, in our old kitchen. As long as someone remembers, we live. Mary Rokonandravu reading from her award-winning book, The Famished Eels. Having written for the last 20 years and not published or entered a competition, it's extremely humbling for Rokonandravu to see her work getting recognition. I wasn't born into a house with books. All I was introduced to was very good storytelling, and I think that's, uh, that's important in terms of writing. The other thing is uh, I was not really formally, I would say, introduced to books until I was in class three. Uh, when, the, when the library opened in Levuka and that was probably the first time I ever saw so many books in, uh, in one room and that for me was the beginning. Rokun and Ravu's story is based on the 1987 coup, the impact it had on families and how family members were split and many left the country to live abroad. It involves two sisters exploring inter-family and historical relationships. The analogy is, uh, is with the two sisters because they're, they're living in, um, in, in a time where, where opportunity is, is shrinking. And uh, the analogy of the eels is uh, when you have dry weather and, and streams and rivers begin to dry up, uh, you find fish and eels in, the, in smaller spaces and they begin to fight for space. And essentially that's what happens to us. Uh, I think it happened to us in 1987 with land, for example. Almost 4,000 writers took part in the competition and Rokonandravu says there's nothing better she could have wished than being chosen as the best five winners in the competition. What's clear is that no one, no one else is going to come and tell our stories. We're the only ones who are going to do it. And if we don't, no one will know. The regional winners will compete with each other to become the overall winner, which will be announced in London on 8th September. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Fiji Bati side to meet Samoa in Pacific Test Decider. And selection for under 18 rugby side for Commonwealth Youth Games. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ki dawa lekar main a gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli Renu. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. Welcome back, this is FBC Sports. Floyd Mayweather claimed a unanimous points verdict over Manny Pacquiao to win the richest fight in boxing history and maintain his perfect record. Mayweather, unbeaten in 48 professional fights stretching back to 1996, retains his WBC and WBA welterweight titles and takes the WBO belt from Pacquiao. The American was caught with the odd good shot but was quicker throughout and always looked in control. The bout titled The Fight of the Century is expected to generate over $400 million. The Filipino community turned up in numbers at the Defense Club in Suva to support Pacquiao. The atmosphere was filled with excitement and anxiety as they cheered on the fighter called the People's Champion. Talendo Dakadaka has more. This was the scene at Suva's Defense Club. Members of the Philippine community came out in large numbers to support 8th Division champion Manny Pacquiao in the fight of the century. Well, uh, the turnout for today's events are very successful and uh, as you can see uh, at the back uh, we're fully booked on uh, Merchant uh, what's this, uh, Defense Club and this is all the Filipino community all over Fiji and then uh, we have some uh, local visitors also, our friends, our friends. This fight has been a long time coming. Here in Fiji, it was a great opportunity for the Philippine community to show their solidarity towards Pacquiao. This is the fight that been waiting for for about five to six years, and it's finally happened today. And then uh, we are very, very thankful for everybody who support and who sponsored uh, the mega fight in Fiji. We're for the Philippine community, they were here to stand alongside the man who is called the People's Champion. Win or lose, we are solid, Manny Pacquiao. Thailand, FBC Sports. The Nandi football side has started its Vodafone Fiji effect on a high note with a 4 0 thrashing of Nandrongai Govin Park. The Stellans did well to hold the defending champions to a scoreless draw at the end of the first half, but Nandi opened the floodgates in the second spell.
know him also as Munit Krishna takes it and Munit Krishna has opened the account in the fifth minute of place through the fingertips and Rao plays it on for Samuel Andrundro Andrundro breaking away with a one-on-one -on -one situation Samuel Andrundro and Samuel Andrundro field but the free kick by Munit Krishna he curls it a header and a header at home goal by Kem then Nandy play another long one they find uh, Samuel Andrundro Drundru on the edge of the box plays it through, then following through is Vikram Chandra. At Ratu Dakombo Park, Edwin Sahayam scored two goals to help Lombasa defeat Tailevuneta Siri 2 0. Marika Koroimbete scored a brace of tries to help the Vodafone Fiji Bati defeat Papua New Guinea Komul's 22 10 in the Pacific Test doubleheader last night. The Melbourne Storm Flyer was in brilliant form, scoring both tries in the first half to open up an 18 0 lead at halftime. 20 minutes to find their feet against the hard-hitting Kumuls, and it was their skipper who broke the deadlock. Bakuya going for the try line. He gets the first try of the evening. Jason Bakuya, the captain. They pay the price from a fundamental error, PNG. But the Kumuls would soon be under more pressure. Star Marika Korobiti was making his presence felt. Oh, that's Korobiti on Monoga. That's the sort of thing Monoga usually dishes out. Both in defence and on the scoreboard. And there's try number two for him. Come to a shuddering halt. Oh, there goes the intercept. Away goes Goodall. And Fabian Goodall races away with a test match. He scores in the corner. It's been a long time coming for Fiji. The Fiji Bati side will now take on Samoa in the Pacific Test decider to contest for a spot in the Four Nations tournament. Samoa defeated Tonga 18-16 in the second Pacific Test match last night at Seba Stadium in Gold Coast, Australia. The Vodafone Fiji Sevens team will be in for a tough battle in the remaining two tournaments of the World Seven Series. The team currently sits on second spot in the World Series ladder with 125 points, behind, ladders, behind leaders South Africa with 129 points. Team manager Paul Lambeau says they are not underestimating any teams. Most of the teams want to finish off uh, in a high note, uh, especially uh, fighting for the, especially the top four. They want to fight on for the top four for the automatically qualifying to the Rio next year. Fiji is pulled alongside host Scotland, Wales and Portugal in the Glasgow Sevens, which kicks off this Saturday. Selection plans are underway for the Fiji Under-18 Rugby Seven side to the Commonwealth Youth Games in Samoa. Team manager Paul Lambeau says they will be scouting talented players from around the country who are eager to represent the team. Bew adds open trial for interested players begins next week and they will be travelling to Savu Savu to also scout for talented players from the Ngaunavao Sevens this weekend. We will start off with the, the open trials, uh, then we'll uh, select an extended squad and from there then we'll, uh, we have to uh, select the final 12 by the latest uh, submission on uh, June the 8th, the 18th of uh, this month. Western Division trials will be held at Nandi Airport Grounds, while the Eastern Division trials will be held at Barkers Park in Suva on Tuesday. The Commonwealth Youth Games will be held in Samoa in September. <laughs> Showers were experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands today. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over Vanuatu and extends eastwards over to Rotuma, Tuwalis and Futuna. Meanwhile, a broad east to southeast wind flow prevails over most southwest Pacific countries. A cool 27 degrees in Suva today, while maximum temperatures climb to 32 in Lotoka, Nandi and Lombasa. The outlook for tomorrow, cloudy periods with some showers of the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, fine apart from possible afternoon or evening showers. Further outlook, fine apart from brief showers of the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, strong southeast winds over most places. And recapping our top stories, police have arrested a lead suspect in an alleged robbery at a service station in Nandi. Fiji's long-term sovereign credit, credit rating 
has been raised from B to B plus by International Ratings Agency Standards and Poor's and Media Industry Development Authority Chairman Ashwin Raj says the Fijian media industry has a long way to go. Now to the poll question, should there be more organized activities for students during the school holiday? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News, or if you're on Twitter, follow in Twitter so news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's the news for tonight. Bye for now.